Um, welcome to this talk. It's called uh, Ansible Project Deploy. And uh, because of the vagueness of the title, I have a subtitle called uh, A Reusable Ansible Role to Deploy Your Project. Um, who here uses Ansible? All right, so quite a few. That's good. You use it for provisioning mainly? Do you deploy software with it? Not really? All right. OK, well, that's what this talk is about, so that's good. Um, uh, the talk assumes a little bit of knowledge about Ansible, so that's why I asked the question. Uh, so first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Ramon de la Fuente. And um, I, I don't have a fetish for underscores, but this is my Twitter handle. Um, <laughs> all the good names were taken. Let's just leave it at, leave it at that. Um, I run my own company. I, I have for eight years now. It's called Future 500. And it's based in Zutomir, so real close by. And um, uh, in my spare time, if I have any, I uh, run a user group called uh, Sweet Lake PHP, also in Zutomir. And we actually have a session tonight, so if you're interested, um, you can join us after, I, I think, about 8, if you're not leaving the venue. Um, Ansible project deploy. So first off, why Ansible? Uh, we use Ansible for provisioning, and for us, it was a, uh, a discovery to find a provisioning tool that, could, that we could understand. And the, the, the writer of, uh, of Ansible said, I, I, I needed to write Ansible because the existing tools didn't fit my brain, which is exactly how I felt when I used Puppet. Uh, who uses Puppet? Do you love Puppet? <laughs> it does the job, right? Well, Ansible was, uh, we're developers, so make that for, first off, make that clear. We're not, um, uh, we're DevOps, right? So we do development mostly, and we have to do the ops. Um, and we love Ansible because it fits uh, with our way of working. And for us, because we did provisioning, uh, actually extending the toolkit to deploys made sense. Um, so it's easy. That's basically our main reason. Um, there is no unnecessary complexity in Ansible. You have no agent. Right? Everything goes over SSH, so you just have a box on the other side and it'll work. Um, it's built for reuse, which means you write some roles and you can uh, share these roles quite easily. And uh, that was a big plus for us, because we use the roles in different setups on, in different ways, uh, because every project has its own uh, provisioning. So sharing the roles was a big plus. And it's actually extendable in your own language. So you could, like we're PHP developers, you could write Ansible modules in PHP. We'd never actually done that because Python is such a nice language to write in, but, um, well, you could if you wanted to, because the way Ansible works is it just copies a module over to the other side and runs it with the parameters that you configured it with. And that should do everything. Um, so this is basically why we use Ansible. But which problem are we solving now with deployments uh, with, with Ansible? Well, First off, we want to uh, deploy at the press of a button. Right? We want our deployment process to be fully automated. There's no need to, to do a manual step anywhere in between. You, you have a new version, you just press a button, or your uh, CI chain presses the button for you, and you deploy to production. Um, besides that, you need to be able to maintain the deploy procedure easily. We found that uh, having a deploy procedure that was complex, that meant like the senior developer had to look at it or, or change it. But anyone could change the parameters of the project. So then the provisioning needs to be changed or the deployment process needs to be changed. Uh, we found that with Ansible, it was quite easy to have uh, any developer be able to change their, their, their setup for the project and also change the deployment script in a single commit, which is something we, we, we love. Um, it has a small learning curve. This basically is the easy thing all over again. And um, we need to reuse the deployment procedure between projects as easy as possible. You don't want to reinvent your deployment every time you have a new project. So this is the problem we looked at. And we, we used Capistrano before. Who here uses Capistrano? Anyone? Do you? Yeah? All right. So um, that's a, a tool in Ruby. Uh, to do the same thing, basically, to deploy your project, but that's just configuration for a project, uh, and the tool ha does the rest. Um, reusing it 
between projects for us well, meant that we had to copy a little bit the way Cap uh, Capistrano do does things in an Ansible role. And uh, that's basically what we built. Before we talk about, um, well, the actual role, let's define a little bit about what a, what a deployment is uh, or what we feel a deployment is. First off, uh, if you use Capistrano, you'll recognize the directory structure. We use a directory structure where you have a folder, a, a root folder for your project, and then a releases folder. And in the releases folder, you'll have, for each deploy that you do, a timestamped folder with that release. Um, next to that is a shared folder, and the shared folder will contain anything that needs to be maintained between releases. For example, if your users upload files and you keep them in your project this way, then you don't want every deploy to remove the files. Or, either, or session files, maybe. If you have sessions in your application, you want to keep those between deploys. Um, there is a source folder inside the shared folder, and um, that is the source code of your, in, of, your, of your application. And you keep that in shared as well, because you don't want to like, download or upload the entire source code every time. You could just update it to the latest version or to the version you're deploying um, from where you're at. And finally, there is a current, um, but the current is just a symlink. It points to the, the release that is currently active. And when you do a new deploy, a new folder will be created, but it won't automatically be the active one. It only turns into the active one if the deployment procedure completes uh, without errors. Um, breaking that down a little bit, uh, what is a deploy? Well, um, if you break that into some steps, you'll get, uh, first off, you'll want to update the code base. And this is the code base in the shared folder. Um, and then copy to a release folder. And after that, you might want to edit or um, change the configuration files specifically for the environment that you're deploying, because sometimes it would be staging, sometimes production, or whatever. Um, next up, if you have that in order, you want to install your dependencies, because your code base doesn't contain all the dependencies for your project, right? There's tons of other stuff. In PHP land, we use Composer, um, which is a, a package manager, but there's also NPM and, and Bower for front-end stuff. Uh, that brings in the, 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 the libraries and, the, and the, the code that you depend on in your application. And you want your deploy to do that in a uh, structured way so that it turns out the same every, everywhere you do it. Um, the step three is preserve shared resources. This means that you um, basically point the locations in your project that need to be maintained like the, sh the sessions folder maybe or the uploads folder, you point that to the shared folder. So then um, they, they, they stay uh, preserved. And finally, in step four, you'll have some build tasks. And this is um, compiling less in SAS maybe. Uh, I'm not sure if you, uh, if you use those tools, but uh, anything that you want to run as a process after your code base is complete and you have all the dependencies there, those are build tasks in step four. And when everything works, uh, then step five is finalized. And it could be anything, but uh, it boils down to re pointing the symlink to the latest release. And then you're done. So these steps and this explanation, um, there's a role for that. And it's called uh, project deploy. If you're, f are you familiar with Ansible Galaxy, anyone? Yeah. So. Ansible Galaxy is the um, like a repository collection for uh, uh, roles in Ansible that you can use so that you don't have to reinvent everything yourself. And um, if you want to get the role from uh, Ansible Galaxy, then you can run the install command. Uh, that's this, Ansible Galaxy install. Uh, probably if you use Ansible Galaxy already, uh, or if you start using it, you'll want to have a configuration files that tell uh, Ansible which projects uh, uh, you depend on or which roles. So here's a, an example file. And you run that with uh, Ansible Galaxy install min, uh, minus R or dash R. Uh, this is just a way to get the role. So now you have it on your machine. And I'll walk you through it. 
to, to, to map the, the tasks in Ansible to the, the, the steps, the five steps that I just described. Um, I realize it's late and there's a lot of slides here which contain Ansible code which you're probably not familiar with if you don't use it, so I'll, I'll go through it a little faster. Um, the first slide here shows you like initialize a task. So Ansible is, is, is built up of roles and then inside the roles you'll have uh, tasks that do um, certain steps and the first parameter for a, let's see if I can do this. Uh, the first parameter here, oh, it's already on the line, sorry. The, the uh, deploy helper uh, colon, that's the name of the module that we're using. And this module was actually written to do the deploys, but if you read the, 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 an, an Ansible file, you'll see that the first word is always the module that's being used. So there is a deploy helper module, and this module is um, available from Galaxy s separately. Uh, so if you find that our role doesn't really match what you're doing, but you would like to have some of the uh, cruft removed from your, your, uh, your own scripts, uh, like creating the directory structure that we're using, um, the, the, the module does that for you. So if you want to use the module separately, you can. First off, when we run this, it's initialized. It'll create the root folder and the shared folder and the releases folder, and it will gather some facts, also something that's Ansible specific, but gathering facts means that um, some variables are, are collected that you can use in subsequent tasks. The variables here, this is the entire list, um, not all of them are really interesting, especially a project path, which is the one you put in yourself. Um, it's only useful to have a, 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 a similar way of, gather, or of using the variable so everything looks the same. This one is the most interesting. Uh, the new release. This is a, a fact that is generated by the module if you don't pass it through, uh, pass it in yourself. And this is a, a timestamp. Um, it, it actually takes three tasks in Ansible to, to create a timestamp and to save it in a variable and to use it later. So having the module generated for you is actually quite nice. Um, so and uh, if you use this role, then you'll have, or if you use the variable, then you, you'll, you'll have the, the name of the module, dot, and then the name of the variable. You'll see that in the lower line. Uh, also interesting, maybe, is the unfinished file name. We have a file that gets created during a deploy inside the release folder. And this file, it, as long as it exists, it signifies that your deploy wasn't finished correctly. Uh, so that um, in a cleanup task later on, when you remove all folders that are not, uh, that are not really releases, then you can just remove that folder uh, because we, we know that it, wa it wasn't a proper deploy. And you can never make a symlink that points to a folder that has that, uh, that file in it. So, moving on. Um, a lot of code again. Uh, interesting here is that the role it does a lot of stuff for you. So it's what you, when you start using this, uh, you'll just have to configure it to do what you want. So what I'm showing you here is the tasks inside, so you'll know what to configure later on. And the most interesting part here is the fact that you can choose a strategy for deploying. So but where does your code come from? And in this case, you can choose either Git or uh, Synchronize, which is an rsync, or um, I think someone added uh, AWS. Uh, so there's, there's multiple places to where you can keep your code, and if you have your code there, uh, then you can use this role to deploy by just configuring it properly. Um, if you look at this slide, you'll see that uh, the version is something that you pass a, uh, on as a variable. So if you want to deploy version uh, like uh, uh, v1.0 of your project, then uh, you pass that along in the in the the calling of the deployment tool. Um, yeah, updating the code base. These are just the tasks that make sure that the code comes from the source that you 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 uh, that you configured, and that it's it's inside a new deployment folder and that it's going to be used later on. Um, so step one is updating the code base, but also updating your configuration files. And with this role, you can choose um, either the files or the copy module of Ansible or the template module of Ansible. And the, the latter one is, is more logical for, for configuration files. Um, 
to just have a list of templates that you want to use, and you pass that list along to the role, and it will make sure that those files get to the end destination and that your variables are set inside. Um, step two, installing dependencies. These are the dependency managers that are included in the role. So if you use this role and you have Composer, you just set a variable to project has Composer to true, which means that uh, the role will know when the time comes to run a Composer install. And the same goes for NPM and Bower. If you have a specialized way of calling your, your dependency manager, so, uh, the, the, the command that's run itself is also a variable. So if you want to override that, uh, you could. But they're all set in defaults, and they're pretty sane defaults. So, so now the configuration files are in order, right? And the, the source code is there, so we can uh, move on to step three, which is the shared resources. The way this role works is that it assumes that you want symlinks from your project, the, the, the one that you're deploying, to the shared folder. So you pass along a list of uh, source and destinations for those links, and the role will create those for you. If we go to step four, now we have the build steps. These are the, the build steps are, are, are the really, really project specific, right? Because they're your own tools, the, the, the steps that you want to run to make sure that everything is in order. So what we've done here is we created a, a list, or you can pass along a list of commands to run. And they go through the command module, uh, which is just like a shell command. Um, that will do whatever you want it to do after the symlinks are in order. So here's an example usage because this one is pretty vague. Uh, the example usage here says that there are three commands that we run. And if you know Symfony uh, in PHP, this is a pretty common uh, framework. If you know Symfony, then this is, uh, uh, you'll recognize the, the commands that you run after you, uh, or before you can use your project. So these are the build steps that you, could, you, that you would commonly use. Um, also, what you could place in here are things like schema upgrades, because your database won't, won't always stay the same. So if you, want to, uh, if you want to upgrade your database schema, then you could have a, a, a build command before you finalize that can uh, upgrade your database schema for you. And um, perhaps if you have a maintenance mode, this is the moment where you want to add a maintenance mode to uh, uh, a ma add a, uh, a maintenance flag to your application so it knows that it can go down, schema upgrade, and then you can finalize. And um, you'll be sure that uh, you don't upgrade your database while you have uh, people coming in. Um, the role ends here, and it would replace the symlink, which means that you don't ha really have an option to do anything uh, special except those, those, those build commands that I described. But if you do have something special, and one thing that would be is like a schema upgrade could be more complicated than just uh, running a script, then uh, you have a variable called project finalize, which you can set to false, which means this role will end its work at this point, and you have a choice to, uh, to have special scripts or additional Ansible scripts that do, that do work, and then you'll do the finalize yourself, like replacing the symlink after all the work is done. So this role is open-ended, and you can add to it. You don't have to do it. It doesn't have to be a complete thing. This slide is actually for me because of all the code. Uh, I realize it's uh, half past five. So there are, it's not as bad as it seems. This role has uh, 98 lines of code, uh, 22 tasks, and uh, a, a couple of variables that you can set. It's not complicated. Anyone can do it. Which means if you want to deploy your projects, it's quite easy to just add a configuration and be done with it and have your deployment uh, in order than, than having to rewrite or reinvent the wheel every time. So let's look at a minimal playbook that you could use. And the playbook is the thing that runs Ansible, um, the thing that you write to deploy your project. All you need in here are some variables. So the minimum that you need to do is uh, set some variables and add the role to your role section in the playbook. 
And that would look like, almost look like this. This is all you need to do to deploy a project. This will not do, uh, admittedly, uh, very useful stuff, but it will make sure that the code on the other end is up to date. Uh, there are no configuration files for templates, so there is no configuration, but it will be done and the symlink will be replaced and you will have new version of your software online. A more realistic example would be, uh, I mentioned Sweet Lake PHP. We have a website. Um, we deploy the website with uh, this tool. And um, this is, the, conf this is the, the playbook that we use to deploy Sweet Lake PHP. So again, the first part is the same. You have a project root. This is different for every project, so that's just a variable. Um, we deploy from, directly from Git. It's on GitHub. But we have an additional environment variable. This environment is something that, uh, it's a regular environment variable, but Ansible uses this uh, variable to, to, to run the build commands with. So um, shared children, I mentioned shared children. Those are just sim links that point to uh, the shared folder. So here's the, the, the list. These are two with a path and a source that point to uh, the uploads and the sessions, which are the two examples that I mentioned uh, that you would want to keep in the shared folder. Um, templates. Um, templates are uh, for a Symfony project is basically a parameters file, also just a list of variables. So there's a template that um, uploads and replaces all the variables for the, uh, for the stage that you are deploying. And that's just uh, three lines of configuration and the actual template that you need to write. Um, project has Composer. It's a PHP project and we use Composer and the build commands. And these are a little more uh, elaborate than the three I showed before, but this is just a list of commands that are run. And finally, uh, you have to add the role to the role section, otherwise it won't work. Those who are still awake, um, this line is the schema upgrade. And it's just smack in the middle of some build commands. It doesn't really, if something goes wrong here, then uh, we're screwed. So I wouldn't recommend doing this actually in production. Uh, I mentioned that we do use it. Uh, you have two reasons when you could do this. One, uh, you're extremely lucky, uh, which I'm not. Um, fingers crossed deployment, that's what we call this. Uh, the other is if you have no visitors on your website, and that's actually the case for Sweet Lake PHP. So we can get away with this, but don't do it in production. What th so that's what the role does, right? Uh, what doesn't it do? I, I actually mentioned it doesn't do schema upgrades. We, ch we chose not to add anything uh, for specific database vendors or anything because schemas and databases are such a, a flavor of the month thing nowadays. Uh, it, it, it's better to just use the open-endedness of the role and stop at the finalize and do your own thing afterwards. It also doesn't do, and Capistrano fans will, won't like this, but it doesn't do rollbacks. Um, Ansible doesn't really work that way. Uh, it describes a state of a machine how you want it to be, and it doesn't really recognize how it was before. So a rollback, uh, we personally say that uh, the, the rollback is a lie. Um, what you want to do when you are deploying, you want the deployment to fail at a certain state, and you don't want to be bothered with it again. It will stop, and you will just deploy again. If you discover what went wrong, you'll fix it, and you'll deploy again the previous deployment doesn't hurt, and it will just be removed. Um, setting a maintenance mode, also something that we didn't include in this role, because it's, you don't know which web servers, if web servers are being used, you don't know uh, where the maintenance mode is set. Uh, we personally use a, 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 just a regular file that exists, and Nginx will check for that, but um, if, you, if you do it differently, then you, then you have to build that around this role. So database migrations, I mentioned, though, mentioned those. It's not, uh, not to complicate this role. So what's next? Uh, for this role, you could, we're, we're, we've actually got a pull request running that would allow you to inject your own tasks, Ansible tasks at a certain point. This would be the callbacks that are uh, familiar from, uh, from, from Capistrano. At a certain point in the role, you want to do some specific task. And if it doesn't match us right now, you have to copy the entire role and do, uh, write the whole thing yourself. 
but um, as of like say next week, next week you can uh, just place a little script of a little, a few, a couple of Ansible tasks at certain points in the process, which makes it a lot more flexible. Um, we wanted to copy the vendor folders from previous releases because if you run a complete composer install or a dependency manager install, then you have all these dependencies that you've already got, and now you're downloading them again. Um, that's actually done. So there are three variables that mean that uh, allow you to keep or copy uh, Composer, NPM, or Bower installations from previous releases. Um, privileges are something that uh, in every deploy you, you get uh, uh, hung up on the privileges that you need for the web server to write to files, but also your deploy user to write to the files. Um, and you don't want to mix those up. We use uh, uh, ACLs for that. And I'd like to have a little bit of um, either an example or some, uh, some good tasks in there that can do that for you with a minimal configuration. And finally, we're open to ideas. Uh, this role is uh, it's open source, obviously. Uh, so pull requests are welcome. Um, it's in Ansible Galaxy, and it's just an uh, LGPL licensed uh, role. Thank you very much. That's, uh, that's it for me. Um, any questions? And I think there's a mic, if there are any questions. No questions whatsoever. I managed to get everyone to sleep. <laughs> Victory. <laughs>